Now in this section, let's take a look at the other text file that will generally come with your images and that file. And that, of course, we're talking about the image load file. While the DAT file identifies what fields of information go together in a record or document, the image load file basically identifies how the images or pages of documents are grouped together. To illustrate that, let's go back to the already built concordance database for just a second. Remember that when I click on the camera button, the corresponding document, whether it's one page or three pages, automatically displays an opticon. So how does Opticon know that I'm currently looking at this record here in concordance? Of all these images that are in my demo database, and we know that there are at least 66 pages of them, how does Opticon identify the one page or one document that I am interested in or that I have currently displayed in concordance? That's where the image load file or the log file comes in. The image load file basically lists every single image that can be called up in the database. You can see that there are 66 TIFF files and that there are 66 entries in the image load file. And each entry contains specific information about the image broken down into four main sections separated by commas. To better understand the image load file, let's take a closer look at each individual section. This first section here is called the image key. Every database that has corresponding images must have an image key that links concordance to the document images. If we take a look at the concordance database that was already built, we can see that this image key for this first record matches the numbers here in the log file. This basically tells concordance that information regarding the image for this record is set out here in this row within the image load file. When I'm flipping through concordance and I click on the camera button here to bring up the TIFF image that I'm interested in, concordance looks at the information that is in this image key field, find its corresponding entry in the log file, and from there it reads the rest of the information in order to bring up the proper image. So. The image key is a very important field. It needs to match up between your concordance database field record and the image load file record. Many areas that you may run into in building a database can probably be traced to the image key being mismatched. Some of the most common problems that could exist would be an extra or missing zero in the image key. Maybe, for instance, the data file contains one less zero than the image load file or vice versa. Another common problem is perhaps an extra spaces in the image key. That tends to happen most with base number that contains prefixes. For instance, a data file may look something like this with BAT 000001, while the image load file may look like this BAT space 00001. So just be aware of the potential small differences between the two files which can cause you problems as you build the database. The next column of information within the image load file is the volume name. This column is no longer as important as it used to be and pretty much can be ignored as long as the rest of the information about the image is correct. Several years back, when data storage was not as abundant as it is today, the images for a database may be stored on multiple CDs or disks. The volume name is a way to identify which CD or disk should be inserted in order to view the corresponding image. So all the images that are to be found on one CD might have a volume name of CD0001. And then the next group of images may have a volume name of CD0002. So that during a document review, the attorney will be prompted to put in a specific volume of CD in order to view the proper images. The volume name, therefore, is really a way to identify which container or folders of specific images are located in. But with data now sitting on servers capable of holding terabytes of information, the need to switch out volumes of CDs is really no longer needed. Instead, we can simply rely on the path information, which is in the next column. This column here basically tells Concordance and Opticon where the desired TIFF is located. Meaning, if I wanted to look at the page base number 
then I need to look at the M drive in the images folder and there will be a TIFF file named 0001-00005.tiff. This TIFF file name does not need to be the same name as the image key here, but it does make everything much neater and easier to track. This way, in one glance, I can tell which file goes with which key. While I could have the image name be something totally different, it's not as neat or intuitive if I should need to manipulate the file in any way. Now one thing you will notice is that the rest of the path will likely need to be changed. Here the image load file points to an M drive and then an images folder. But as you can see on my computer, I don't have an M drive. This is something that's very common when you receive raw text files or image load files from your vendor. The vendor will not be able to know where the actual TIFF images will end up on your server so any drive letter or path information that they provide to you will likely need to be changed. To do that, you can do a very simple find and replace with Notepad or any text editor. So I'll go ahead and do a search, find and replace, and I'm going to replace m slash images with cdemo slash images, which is where I have the actual TIFF files copied to. Now, instead of changing the information within the text file itself, I could have waited and simply changed it in Opticon after everything was loaded. Either way will work, and we will go through how to do so in Opticon in the next lesson. But in my opinion, if you can change it in the original text file, then it makes sense to do so. It's simpler and you won't have to keep editing the file later on. Now, the last column are these commas here. This is the document break section. This is where the page groupings and document groups are determined in Opticon. The page or document breaks are defined by these four commas at the end of each line. While each comma has a specific function, the most common display you'll find are only these letter Y's after the first column and the number after the last comma. Let's talk about this letter Y. This letter Y after the very first comma here indicates a document break. This means that this first row is a single document, the next row is a single document, and the next row is a single document. Notice now this fourth row has a Y, but row 5 and 6 does not. This means that row 5 and 6 are pages of the same document, and they follow the document of row 4. So while the first three rows are three single documents, one page each, this fourth row is a three-page document. The next document does not begin until a new letter Y shows up. And as you can already see, the numbers that follow the last comma indicates how many pages are within that particular document. Now it is also common not to have these page numbers when you first receive the image load file. Since Opticon can help you calculate the page count based on these letter Ys, the page numbers can always be regenerated, and so some service providers do not add a page number at the end of each row. I personally prefer to have the information, just so I can easily eyeball the information and have a form of double check. But this image load file would be just as acceptable and would function fine without these ending numbers. Now sometimes, you may also find image load files with extra characters within these three commas. They are a way to track the folder and box breaks of a document. So assume that if you have a box, inside are many manila folders, you can insert characters here between these commas to display those breaks. But because the information is generally tracked within the concordance fields, you'll find that having that redundant information within Opticon doesn't really serve any purpose and in fact make your image load files somewhat cluttered and hard to work with. The best image load file should really just have the document break component along with the page count information. That is sufficient for a smooth operating image base. So there you have the four major components of a correctly formatted image load file. The image key which corresponds to a field in the concordance followed by a comma, the image volume name, which nowadays can really be anything you want, followed by another comma, the path of the TIFF image, including the full TIFF name ending in .tif, followed by four commas, 
and then the document break and page counts inserted to their appropriate locations after the first and last commas. In a nutshell, this is what an Opticon image load file consists of. In the next lesson, we begin to build our concordance database and then load these image load files into an image base.